What is up, Responsible Day Traders? Today is Sunday, June 5th, 2022. I'm Lindsay Duff, and this is Responsible Day Trading. So last week, I had a guest step in, Jason, who is my head coach and does work with students um, just the same way that I do. Uh, so he came in and gave you a little insight to how the week may be, and what he gave you was pretty darn good. So it was really nice to have him there, and we may have him step in a little more often. A um, couple things going on. We do have a new website for you profit trader. So you should go check out youprofit.com. And uh, right now we're running a 40% discount using the code June 40. That'll get you 40% off of any of the e-mini accounts, which now there's a $200,000 account. So that is uh, something interesting that we've added in. And the website is super fast. So we'll check that out before we head on over to um, check out the market. So you know what? Let's just go ahead and peep it all out. All right, so here's the new website if you're looking to check it out. Um, there are you know, some things that we need to fix up on it a little bit, but for the most part, it's running pretty well, pretty smooth, and uh, I think that everybody's loving it so far. If you've got any questions over anything that we do here, you can just go over to the help and find out any information that you need over there. All right, so let's go ahead and see what we got going on in the news right now. All right, so we're gonna head on over here to Responsible Day Trading com head over to market news and we can see what we got oh we got a light week this week okay so nothing monday nothing tuesday wednesday we've got crude inventories those don't come out until about an hour after the market opens and then thursday and friday it's all pre-market so that uh you know last week we had a lot of stuff going on which really did give some boost to the market but we may not see that same kind of thing happen this week it may be slow you know, you never know what's going to happen, but let's go ahead and check out what we got going on back here. First, we're going to bring up the daily chart because we want to look at what's happening in the biggest picture right now. Now, something I want you to look at is looking down to these MACDs. So we can see right here, the MACDs are still outside of the Bollinger Bands. They are pointing to the upside right now. So even though we pulled back and we had this divergence that pushed everything up and pulled back into the EMAs, uh, we may still pull back into them a little bit. With this BB still showing some strength up, now we are very close to the zero line, which is definitely a place to anticipate a bounce. We did see it pull back right back in this area. We may see this make the attempt to push up just a little bit higher and maybe even make it up towards the large EMA if these MACDs stay strong to the outside here. Now, if they start to roll and curl inside, then we're gonna start to know the price pushing down a little bit. Now, when we want what we want to see for this to really give us the information that we need to see that it's going down is to see this BB start to roll inside and push down in order to really see um, you know, this movement to the downside. And even at that point, I just want to kind of point this out. Even at that point, if this pushes down here, we are going to end up with some major either divergence or retracement divergence because it's going to take a lot of work for these BBs to come back down as far as the price. It's going to be some work for it to happen. So we're, if it does pull back down right away, we're going to end up seeing some retracement divergence or some divergence and really going to expect it to give another attempt to push to the upside before or if it is going to go down. So this BB is really trying to show us more movement to the upside, maybe up towards the zero line, maybe a little bit higher. But for right now, it's kind of a it, even though the area is pushing down, it's trying to tell us a little more up still. So let's go ahead and head over to the 28657, which is our next chart we like to look at. Now, one of the interesting things here is that the EMAs have not crossed over and the BBs are making their attempt. Uh, I'm sorry, they're beyond the attempt. They're outside of the Bollinger Bands. They are not strong, but we see what's happening with this BB starting to curl up like this. We should see this push back up a little bit more. 
So with these EMAs still open, I mean, and it may even just come right back up in this area, but that's a pretty big area when you're looking at something like the 28657. So these are about 10, uh, even further, these are about 30, 40 points apart, these two lines that are drawn here. So it gives a lot of space to run and to move. But you know, what we're looking at here is we are still below the zero line. We are below the EMA. Technically, the, the direction is down, being below those areas. But the thing is, is we saw both price and MACDs trying to lead higher right here. We saw a struggle getting back further below here. We saw a big push that happened earlier on and we are not seeing any really no divergence at the top of these pivots. So seeing it push back up is definitely a reality, but for how far, right? Are we going to see it? And let me just come back to the daily chart really quick. Are we gonna see it do something like what happened here? And this may be what we see. And if it if it is what we see, it's, you can see it's gonna take work and a couple of weeks before we start making that momentum to the upside again. But it's kind of the same look here. We were just a lot further from the zero line than we are right now here. Uh, it's pushed outside, it's still pushing up. It would really need to roll inside and push back down for us to be able to see this go down. Even though this direction is down, it is trying to give us signs that it's working and attempting to move to the upside. Now let's come and look at this mess. Okay. And I want to talk a little bit about the price and the MACDs and some of the things we look at, because I know some people are really struggling with these reversal bars that are consistently happening in all of this price right now. When this is happening like this, you have to be hyper-focused on the things that have the smooth run. And those smooth runs are happening down here in the MACDs. So something like anticipating this push to happen back down here, we wanna wait until we see some real confirmation in the MACDs. And by then we're seeing reasons for it to continue up. So sitting out of this mess, doesn't hurt a soul. I mean, just look at this. It's very, very hard, especially for someone who may be new to learning this information or may not have the um, capacity to be able to look past and learn from mistakes right away. You may want to sit this out because it's just very, very hard to um, get in with good low risk entries right now and the movements are not following through. So even something like this, if we took the short whenever it pulled back right in here, when it gets down to this area, you can see the MACDs are leading much, much higher saying, no, we're not gonna push any further. Pulls up again, rolls inside, pulls down right back down to the area, MACDs leading higher, no follow through. And it just continues to happen. And now the MACDs weren't even breaking through the bottom Bollinger Band, which told us this was gonna push up. But let's look at this. If we're looking to have our risk in a place where we don't want the market to go, if we're looking for the long trade, we want our risk right here. If we're looking for the short trade, we want our risk somewhere like this and to be able to follow it down as it goes down in order to minimize the risk. And there are some rules that come with following that risk down. You don't wanna just be all willy nilly and throw it in there. And we'll probably talk about that a little bit more later on. But even looking here at our 233, it's extremely hard to have a nice entry that's low risk. Say we're using a two and a half point risk and we want our risk back behind this area. So we would have to get in somewhere about right in here. And it's a little tough because this just flew to the upside like that. A lot of times what happens is you'll end up catching it somewhere right in here, which puts your risk in the wrong spot. Your risk will end up where it could come back and easily get touched. Uh, you know, just saying like, maybe we got in here when we had our risk in the wrong spot, this was going to take us out. Um, now, if you had a pullback that happened here, maybe a place to minimize the risk as this is trying to move up. But at the same time, you don't want to jump into these trades. Even if I was to get in right now, I would have to have somewhere around three and a half, four points in risk to have my stop 
in the proper place to keep it from getting hit immediately. And, you know, if you were even looking to the biggest picture, you know, we wanted to see the movement happen somewhere back in here, but we can't always catch that. So we're looking for what's happening in between and still trying to have low risk while we're looking for that bigger opportunity. All right, so hopefully that gives you a little bit of insight into where the risk should go and why. And another thought process of see what's flowing and don't just try and take every little reversal bar that's happening right there. You need to see what's flowing and the flow is happening down here in the MACDs. This is what's giving us the information that says, hey, not yet, not yet, not yet. Okay, now it's time. And when it happens and it's time, if it takes off too much, just wait. Wait for the next opportunity. And if that means there's not an opportunity that day, then that just means that you kept yourself out of some really, really risky trades that could have eaten your lunch. And I don't know about you, but I like to eat my own lunch. I mean, I share from time to time, but um, <laughs> when it comes to something like this, I wanna make sure my head's in the right space. And if I'm jumping into trades where I have to really move my risk, which I don't like to do, I will only do two ticks, two and a half points is my biggest one. I get in with two points, I will only move it two ticks to two and a half points. That's it. And that's on the E-mini SMP, right? And if I'm getting in a place where it looks like for my wrist to be in the right place, I'm going to need three, four points. I'm passing on it. I'm going to wait for the next one to set up. When that one sets up, then I'm going to be prepared. And if it doesn't give me a low risk opportunity, see you later, buddy. I don't want to be a part of it. It just it gives me a little bit of heart palpitations, makes me stress out a little bit. And who needs that? <laughs> Nobody, you know? All right, guys. So let me know what you think about the new website for you, Profit Trader. would love to hear your feedback. Yes, I know there's a few things that need to be adjusted with uh, some of the text and things like that. We're going to make sure that we're taking care of the customers first. Text will come next, okay? <laughs> so uh, guys, if you have questions, definitely let us know. We're here for you. We're happy to help. If you're new to all this, then check out our free beginner guide that we have on the site. It will give you a lot of information into what are e-minis, what are futures, how do those differ from stocks? But you know, if you have more questions after looking through that, just reach out to us. We're happy to help you out. You can reach out to info at responsibledaytrading.com. Don't forget, we've also got the day trader tax awareness. So if you want to find out more about day trader taxes, then reach out to my friend Jay and go over to responsibledaytradingtaxpros.com and you know, hit him up with your questions and he'll be happy to help. All right, guys. Well, we're going to go ahead and wrap that up. I hope that everybody has a wonderful week. And as always, you know that I look forward to catching you on the profitable side.